You guys always ask me, how do you really win a 1v3? And as somebody who has played a lot of no fill, <laughs> to the cost of my mental well being. What? What? It's, it's getting the complacent ones. Audio would be awesome. Audio? No? Okay. I feel like I have a lot of knowledge to share that will allow you to win more solo situations. And some of you might ask, why should I even learn how to play solo in the first place? And I will explain that later in the video. But in short, playing solo is a cheat code to make you amazingly good at Apex Legends. The first thing that you probably already have heard a lot, something that you may have heard in passing, or when asking your favorite content creator about how you actually win more 1v3s. You've probably heard things like, work on your angles, separate enemies into 1v3s, and while that sounds nice and all, honestly, it doesn't really help that much. I mean, if you're starting from the beginning, how do you work angles and how do you find those 1v3s? So let's just dive into it. No matter the fight, there will always be small windows of opportunity where you can force a 1v1 duel against one of the many players on the enemy team. These windows can usually be found by peeking the right way and catching your enemy off guard and usually isolated. The best way to work an angle is by playing close to cover and gradually jiggling in and out of cover as you expose more and more of yourself while clearing more and more angles. And if you spot a lot of enemies at once, you get back into cover. Generally speaking, the military has actually figured out the best way to do this as well. Where in training, you will generally learn that you can clear a room by gradually swinging from the left hand cover to the right. Working cover in this way will allow you to find more openings without overexposing yourself, no matter the circumstances. I still can't believe the military developed techniques for gaming. Like, that's actually sick. But the best opportunity to peek will always be when the enemies are going to run up on you, because that is when they are the least likely of being able to actually shoot back if you do end up peeking them, and usually because they are running in one direction, they are very easy to deal a lot of damage to. In almost every single fight in Apex, there will be a point where the enemies will decide to run up. Usually that is following an opening, such as them realizing your solo, the enemies getting enough damage on you, or from the enemy team just becoming so bored that they want to push the first thing that they do see. No matter the reason, identifying that this window is coming up is key, as it will allow you to peek out using the previous tip and deal a lot of damage as they run up ideally getting a knock or a major amount of damage for free. And it is important to understand that these windows will give you a massive leg up. Let me come with an example. If the enemy team does crack your armor, instead of ducking behind cover and immediately popping your shield battery, you could get behind cover, wait a little moment, and then peek out instead of healing up because they're probably pushing your way. And by staying at least one step ahead of your enemy at all times, you are more likely to spot these windows of opportunity, allowing you to deal a lot of damage and turn the fight around. In the same vein, and this part is probably more important than the last, do not allow yourself to take damage. Sure, taking damage, as I mentioned before, might open up a window of opportunity that you can play off of, but it is pretty risky. You don't want to seek this out. That tip is more about turning a bad situation into something playable, rather than something you should aim for every single fight. So, if we're using the windows of opportunity as a reference, when the enemies are pushing up and you catch them in the act with a well-timed and well-angled peek, no matter how much damage that you have done, consider not continuing to shoot if the enemies end up stopping and aiming or even firing back at you. Because in a 1v3 situation, you usually will have to deal over 600 damage in order to win, and each individual enemy probably just has to deal about 60. Meaning that one point of damage is worth 10 times more for them than it is for you. The more you can avoid giving them any of that very, very valuable damage, the longer you will be able to stay alive and the more likely you are to survive and win the team fight. Because of these massive differences in terms of each team's health pool, this means that you generally don't want to stay in one spot. If the enemies know exactly where you are, they are very likely to push you and simply outtrade you by dealing that 60 damage each, way before you even get the chance to deal something like 200 yourself. This strategy is super good and is usually referred to as handholding, where you are pushing the enemy so close together that I swear you don't even go to the bathroom to 
pee without their two other teammates holding their hands. Anyways, if you're fighting a full team as a solo and they haven't locked you down behind cover just yet, consider never really letting them see you in the same spot more than once. If you take a peek from one angle, try to deal as much damage as you can and the second that they know where you are, you have to fall back or switch up your position before re-peeking. Two no-filling legends that are absolutely great at this are Aceu and Fade, who use zip lines to bounce around and constantly switch up the angle and the point of attack while not letting the full enemy teams have any idea of what's going on at any point in time. And actually, most of the time, these 1v3s are a combination of the previously established rules dragged out over a longer period of time as you slowly but surely wear the enemy team down until you get one, then two, and finally all three knocks to close out the team fight. The name of the game is poking and prodding the bear until it gets agitated and starts pushing into a bad situation where you have the advantage. And you would be surprised just how terrible self-control the average Apex player really has. Also just a quick mention, while I said you don't want to be seen in the same spot more than once, keep in mind that you can obviously decide to intentionally peek the same spot after being spotted to inspire sort of a false confidence in enemies and bait them into pushing you, which might give you an opening to deal a lot of damage as well. That being said, if you do find yourself stuck in one position, unable to really move or escape due to external factors, or just if you want to stay safeguarded against the worst case situation, make a habit of armor swapping and setting up armor swaps when you get the kill. By having an armor swap nearby, if you do play angles and end up unfortunately trading damage with the enemies as they do push up, this means that you'll be able to immediately move back to one of the many armor swaps that you may have set up and get most, if not all, of the lost health back to deal with the next enemy. Moving back from your cover to an armor swap and ideally another set of cover actually ends up covering a previous point I made, specifically when it comes to constantly switching up your angle. Building off of this, if you do end up getting a knock on an enemy and you still have a little bit of time or at the very least a little bit of an opening, always try to finish them off before switching up your angle. This stops the enemy from getting a chance of resetting the fight, it gives you a potential armor swap if you should need it, and allows you to continue moving on, dragging out the fight and continuing to force the enemy to push towards you, which is ideal because the longer enemies are forced to push you, as I mentioned previously, the more likely they are to make a mistake and give you an opening to deal devastating damage and get another knock, which is really all you're playing for. And forcing the enemy team to make a mistake is generally the way you should play Apex, but it's even more important if you're playing as a solo player, where you you have to force the enemy team to make a mistake and you have to be there to punish it all while playing perfectly yourself and not making a single mistake which makes it one of the best ways that you can improve and going from no filling into playing with either a solo queue squad or a full stack is like taking off a 50 pound vest and it makes every single part of the game so much easier like actually you'll be surprised how much easier the game feels even if you go into ranked once you've grown accustomed to dealing with the sweaty pub as a no filler, it's just awesome. Just keep in mind that while doing this will force you to level up your individual skill, as I mentioned earlier, because you know, any single mistake will be lethal, do keep in mind that you may lose out on some of your team playability, so if you start playing with some mates, make sure to keep their needs in mind as well, and you know, go and pop off as much as you want, just make sure that all the plays that you do keep your teammates and their positioning in mind as well. And by combining the increased solo play skill with some emphasis on team play, you'll actually find yourself completely unstoppable. If you guys do want some more assistance with getting better at no filling or I guess Apex in general, you should still check out otter.coach and talk to one of my chair picked coaches that can help you become even better at the game. And if you don't feel like doing that, you can also check out the video on the screen to get even better at Apex. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow. Peace out.